Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well and staying safe. And I'm cooking from my kitchen again today, so I'm quarantine cooking, and I've got a great recipe that you can make using a handful of ingredients, and it's my pineapple teriyaki chicken meatballs. So not just chicken, but chicken meatballs. It's a sweet, savory combination of soy sauce and pineapple juice and some herbs and spices, and it comes together really fast and super easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. So first I'm gonna make the meatballs and I love to roast the meatballs, whether they're beef or turkey or chicken, because I like to get the meatballs in my oven while I tend to other things on the stove. And then also, especially with beef, a lot of the fat cooks off and ends up on the baking sheet and not in your meal. So I love it, always roasting the meatballs. So in this bowl, I have a pound of ground chicken. And again, you can use ground turkey or ground beef. And then here, I give you a couple of options here because I love to have, you know, use this if you don't have that type of recipes, especially now if we're not getting to the store as much. So if you have fresh onion, you would use a quarter cup of fresh minced onion. And instead, I am gonna use, because I just got back from being out of town, I don't have any onions. So I'm gonna use this dried minced onion and I'm gonna use about two tablespoons of it. And I love it, it adds, um, it's a great substitute, but also, even if I have an onion, I use it, because I like, it's kind of got a, um, like a, a toasted quality to it. So it's like onion and a little bit even better than onion. So there we go, we got that. And same thing with garlic. If you have fresh garlic cloves, you can mince them up or grate them and put them in here or the dried minced garlic, which I also love. And so this is almost like a teaspoon, teaspoon. So if, you, if it calls for a teaspoon or about a clove of garlic, then you do a teaspoon of this dried minced garlic, which looks like it's the end of that. So you can tell I use that a lot. So I'll put all that in there. And then um, dried cilantro, I love because this infuses its flavor, the dried herb, as the meatballs cook and um, gets into every little part of the, every little bite. So that's the onion, garlic, cilantro, then just salt and pepper. And I'm gonna mix this quickly until it's blended. So you probably noticed I don't use any fillers like egg or breadcrumbs. And I do that on purpose. I think if you had a lot, like if you use these, especially these dried onion and garlic, you don't need it. I think it's a lot of extra ingredients that you don't need. These meatballs are gonna roast and they're gonna simmer in a sweet and savory sauce. They'll be plenty tender. You don't need to add all that extra filler which you you know sometimes see in meatball recipes. I rarely do that unless I'm trying to do something like, um, that's gonna be like a, like a chicken parmesan where I want breadcrumbs and cheese and all that in the meatballs. So this is almost blended. And I'm gonna make this into 12 meatballs. You can do 16 smaller meatballs and adjust the cooking time, take a couple of minutes off the cooking time. Okay, great, beautiful. Okay, all blended. So now I'm gonna shape this into 12 meatballs. So what I do, this is the way I kind of try to get it even. So I split it in half, then I know I need to get six out of this side. And so I will get split it in half. I need, I need to get three out of each one of these. And then I bring my baking sheet over and I'm just gonna plop down mounds of the chicken. And then I'm gonna have water moistened hands to roll them into balls. Cause chicken's still, I find it a little bit stickier than ground beef and um, you know it can stick to your hands a lot. So water moistened hands, it's this sneaky little kitchen culinary hack that prevents it from sticking. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go rinse my hands, get them wet and shape these into meatballs. Okay, back with wet hands and watch this. No sticking, it's such a time saver. You're gonna love this trick. It makes really fast work of meatball rolling. Last meatball. So here I have a parchment lined baking sheet where I've lined up my 12 meatballs. You can use aluminum foil instead of parchment paper if that's what you have. Preheated the oven to 400 degrees so it's ready for me. These are gonna go in for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're golden brown and caramelized and cooked through. And in the meantime, we're gonna make the sauce and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, the meatballs are roasting, so now I'm gonna show you how to make a super easy pineapple teriyaki sauce. Um, all comes together. You can actually build this in the skillet. I thought I would just build it in this measuring cup so you can watch all the ingredients go in and you can see what I'm doing. So I've got three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. The recipe calls for a cup. I'm saving a quarter cup to add with cornstarch. 
so we can thicken the sauce later, but for now, three quarters of a cup. And then a six ounce can of 100% pineapple juice. Um, if you have a big bottle of the pineapple juice, you use that, you, could, you just need six ounces, so three quarters of a cup. And then we're going to do about a teaspoon of sesame oil, a half to one teaspoon. Sometimes I like to use a little less, so it's not so strong of a sesame flavor, but I love it because then it's clearly, you know, an Asian inspired dish with that wonderful nutty toasted sesame quality. And then mirin, which is a Japanese rice wine, adds a little sweetness. If you don't have mirin, you can leave it out or you can use a little bit of honey. I like it because it partners with the pineapple juice and, and the salty soy sauce that we're gonna add. So we're gonna about a tablespoon of mirin in there. And this is sold right next to the soy sauce in the grocery store. And then here's the soy sauce, quarter cup. You can also use liquid aminos if you prefer to do that and stay away from soy sauce. I've got half a teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder. Remember there's garlic and onion in the meatballs. So this is kind of just the partner flavor in the sauce. So both of those will go in. Easy breezy. And then a little bit of salt. Soy sauce is salty, even if you use reduced sodium. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. This smells so good already. Just the combination of soy and sesame, like right there. But then you've got now the pineapple and the garlic and the onion and a little bit of the sweetness from the mirror and it's a perfect sauce. So that's it. It's already, you know, it's all liquid. So it's super thin and super easy to whisk together. So I'm gonna get this over to a skillet, bring it to a simmer and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. We're gonna thicken it with that corn sauce, that cornstarch slurry with chicken broth and then put the finished meatballs in and serve it up over rice. You're gonna love it. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the skillet. The sauce is bubbling away. So this is where I'm gonna add that slurry, which is the tablespoon of cornstarch and that reserved quarter cup of chicken broth. You can also use water. I just like to add more flavor with the chicken broth. And this dissolves in cold before it gets into the hot or the cornstarch will clump. So we're gonna add this and it'll thicken up and stay glossy. Look how smooth and satiny that is. You can't get that shiny glaze when you use all-purpose flour. This beautiful sauce is ready for the meatballs. Here they are from the oven. Look how beautiful they look. Golden brown. I hope you can see them. The steam isn't blocking. You can see them when I add them in here. Look at that. Oh, they're gorgeous. Now these just need to heat through for a minute or two in the sauce. And then I'm gonna show you what this looks like when we serve it over rice. So I put the meatballs and sauce over some cooked wild rice. I already sprinkled with a little cilantro, cause you know, there's cilantro in the meatballs and fresh is super awesome on top. And then a little chopped green onions. Wow, this is ready to serve. I really love this recipe, so I hope you tried. It's super simple, great for a busy weeknight or a night when you just wanna stay home and not run out. You can make subtle substitutions if you don't have an ingredient or two. So I know you can make it and I know you're gonna love it. So if you try it, let me know, leave a comment. And I have lots more up my sleeve to share with you. So in the meantime, enjoy this dish and my other dishes that you can find here. And I will see you next time.